Question 6a, differentiate f of x with respect to x from first principles. So when we're using our first principles, we're looking at the limit as h approaches zero, um, and I go f of x plus h minus f of x, and I divide that all by h. So that's how we find our first principle, differentiating from first principles. Now, for my formula, I need f of x, and I need f of x plus h. So I know what f of x is. f of x, they give it to me in the question. It's given as 2x squared plus 4x. So that's fine. Next thing I need to find, though, is f of x plus h. So in this case, I'm basically subbing in x plus h for x. So I'm going 4 times x plus h. Now I need to tidy that up, so I need to multiply out these brackets, so something squared means it's by itself, and then 4 times x plus h. Multiplying this in, I'm going to just multiply in the 2 first of all, so that's going to give me uh, 2x plus 2h times x plus h, plus, and I'll multiply in this 4 now, which is going to give me uh, 4x plus 4h. Multiplying in these two brackets now is going to give me a 2x squared plus 2hx plus 2hx plus uh, 2h squared. And then add on your 4x plus your 4h. So my final line here for the value of f of x plus h, tidying it up is going to be 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared plus 4x plus 4h. I don't think we can tidy that up any further. So that's my little bit of rough work done. I'm going to come back up now and sub all that into my limit formula. So I have the limit as h approaches 0 is equal to f of x plus h. Well, f of x plus h is now given as 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared plus 4x plus 4h. I now subtract, so let me just put that in a different color just to make sure we know what we're doing, and I'm subtracting f of x, and f of x is 2x squared plus 4x, and I need to put that all over h. My next step now is going to multiply in this minus, so take everything out of brackets. So I have the limit as h approaches 0 is equal to 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared, 4x, 4h. Multiplying in that minus now will give me a negative 2x squared and a negative 4x. Once again, don't forget it's all divisible by h. So my next step, limit as h approaches 0 is equal to. Now, I'm hoping things will start cancelling on the top line of my fraction. So you can see here, for instance, the 2x squared cancels with the minus 2x squared. Positive 4x cancels with negative 4x. So my top of my fraction is now going to look like 4hx plus 2h squared plus 4h, all divided by h. I now need to divide the top line uh, by h. So one way of looking at it is maybe if you want to factorize out h from the top line. So if I factorize out the h, it would be h times 4x plus 2h, because h by 2h is 2h squared plus 4. And that's divisible by h, and then the h's will cancel. So that's leaving me with the limit as h approaches 0 is equal to 4x plus 2h plus 4. Slightly running out of space here, so I'm just going to bring it up here. So I'm just going to make a little bit of room for my last little step. So bringing that up, I have the limit as h approaches 0 is equal to 4x uh, plus 2h plus 4. Now what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the limit as h approaches 0, so I'm basically subbing in the value for uh, h. So I'm going 4 times x, sorry, that's 4x. So 4x plus 2 times h. Well, h is uh, approaching 0 at my limit, plus 4. So that's giving me... Uh, 4x, two zeros are nothing, plus 4. So that my derivative here is 4x plus 4. So differentiating uh, 2x squared plus 4x, f dash of x is 4x plus 4.
Part B, a rectangle is expanding in area. Its width is X centimeters. Its length is always four times its width. Find the rate of change of the area of the rectangle with respect to its width X when the area of the rectangle is 225 centimeters squared. So first thing I'm going to do here is um, draw out our rectangle. So let's look at it out here actually to the side. So I have my rectangle here. And what do I know about it? I know its width is X. And then they tell me that the length is always four times its width. So four times its width is four times X. So that's basically my rectangle. Now the question focuses in on area of rectangle. So the formula for the area of a rectangle is given as length by width. Now I know my length and width here. Uh, length is X and width is four X or vice versa. And multiplying that in, I get area is equal to 4x squared. So that's the area of my rectangle here. Now the question is talking about rate of change, which is around differentiating. So I'm going to differentiate the area with respect to x here. So that would be dA dx, and differentiating 4x squared gets me 8x. Okay, so that's my rate of change. Now if we come over here and look at it in another way, um, the area of my rectangle is 4x squared. That's it in terms of x. But the question tells us that the area of the rectangle is 225. So I'm letting them equal to each other because I know what the area is. Now if I solve this for x, I have x squared, divide across both sides by 4. And to get x on its own, I get the square root of 225 over 4. And the square root of that is giving me 15 over 2 or 7.5 on my calculator and now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to bring that back to my rate of change so remember we have uh, dA dx we have a value of 8x I now have the value of x when the area is 225 so I'm basically going to sub in my value for x which is 15 over 2 7 and a half and when I multiply that out I get 60 um, centimeters uh, what's it asking? Find the rate of change of the area of the rectangle. Yeah, so that would be 60 centimeters squared. That's the change in the area uh, with respect to the sides, which are in centimeters. So maybe something like that, 60 centimeters squared per centimeter. Part C. The graph of a cubic function P of X is shown in the diagram below in the domain 0 to 4. The maximum value for the derivative of P in this domain is 1 and p dash of 0 is minus 3 where p dash of x is the derivative of p of x. Use the information to draw the graph of p of x in the second set of axes below in the domain 0 to 4. So as we look at it here the graph of p of x is a cubic function and it's a negative cubic function and when you differentiate a cubic function you get a quadratic function and we're looking at a negative quadratic here and just as a little bit of rough work here we know that a negative quadratic must look something like that. A um, couple of things we can use here to find out where it crosses our um, x-axis for my p dash of x. The quadratic will cross the x-axis at the maximum and the minimum turning point of the cubic. So here's the minimum and here's the maximum of the cubic. And if I just drop down dotted lines here, so here at three and at one, they're the roots basically of my um, quadratic function. So there's two things found. Next thing we can use is our knowledge of the point of inflection. The point of inflection is basically halfway between the maximum and the minimum. So it's this point here. And that point basically will indicate the turning point of our quadratic. So I'm just going to drop that blue line down here. Now, we need to figure out where is that turning point of our quadratic. It tells us in the question here that the maximum value of p dash of x in the domain is 1. So that's telling us the highest value for x is 1. or sorry, for y is one, or, or p dash of x is one. So that's telling me my point here 
at 2, 1 is the maximum turning point of our quadratic. Now, what else do we know? In the question, it also tells us that when x is 0, my value for the derivative is minus 3. So the point there is 0 minus 3. And 0 minus 3 on my graph would be here. So there's another point on our graph. So if I basically just connect these dots freehand, now it's quite hard on the screen here, but easier on paper. Let me start again, it's gone off already. So it looks something like that. Now we know though that it's a quadratic and a quadratic is symmetrical um, across its left and right of its center line. And the question wants us to sketch it in the domain zero to four. I've only sketched it there from zero to three. So I technically need to continue that, um, that curve down to here. That should be crossing um, the point four minus three. So there's the sketch of the derivative.